drummer stuff. Just a plain old country boy, what you want to call it, you know. Uh, that's the way I was raised and brought up to be. And uh, racing has been good to me, and uh, I owe everything that I got to racing. I started racing when I was about 17, and I bought my first car. I didn't know what to do to a car. The only thing I'd ever heard of was cut the flywheel and shave the heads. There wasn't anybody could uh, actually drive against him on dirt. That's how good he was. Yeah, I think he's just a kid who grew up a Mill Hill kid. Not a lot of promise, and he found something to that he could do and just jumped in it with both feet immediately and never looked back. Ray Fox, his car, number three, driver Dave Pearson. They ended up uh, winning the race, 406-0. Ray asked me, did I want to go to Daytona? And I ended up winning it. We went to Atlanta and I won it. And at that time, nobody had ever won three big races in one year. So uh, when I done that, that really just picks me right up. Pearson's been playing it cool. He's kept the leaders in sight and kept out of trouble. That's the secret that's made him national champion. We won 15 races in 66 when we won the championship. A young man who is the reigning grand national champion from Hartford, North Carolina, David Pearson. Holman Moody was a first-class operation. And Pearson fit right in, you know. We just had fun everywhere we went, you know, and especially running for the championship. We won it twice to all one of us. Well, you can hear that crowd in the background. It's really roaring for you. Thank you. Yeah, I tell you, his attitude about the whole deal was uh, he was not supposed to lose. Sports writers like to call David Pearson a silver fox because a lot of times he drives just behind the leader waiting for a mistake. And when it comes, the fox wins. You got to think. You can't just go out there and run wide open all the time. You got to be thinking all during that race. A superlative performance by the Silver Fox. You don't let them know what you can do either. A 160 mile an hour battle of wits and courage. And the master just called checkmate. Well, the Silver Fox came through once again here today, showing him when it counted the most right at the end. The only race he ever run was in the last eight or ten laps. And that's when the show was really put on. Because he was fresh, the car wasn't wore out, and he'd tear you up. Here's the checkered flag out for David Pearson. And Mr. Cool does it again. And he was Mr. Cool with those sunglasses and, you know, with a stick of gum in his mouth. Sort of the Steve McQueen figure in the NASCAR garages. That's him to a T. I think he loved it. <laughs> well, I kissed him pretty good after the race, and my wife got all over me. I said, now look here, that's part of it. They want me to do that for the movie, for the picture, you know. <laughs> Fox did it again. Well, thank you, David. <laughs> Listen, David Pearson didn't lead all the laps in NASCAR. He didn't lead the most laps. But in this sport, you only remember who takes a checkered flag. He knew what he had under the hood. He knew what kind of car he had. And you do whatever you have to do to win. He did that 105 times. And now it is my great pleasure to introduce to you the greatest driver in the history of NASCAR, Mr. David Pearson. On this day, 
23rd day of May, 2011, it is my honor to formally induct David Pearson into the NASCAR Hall of Fame and present him this inductee ring. Thank you, Russell and Leonard. Appreciate that. What can I say after all they said? Yeah. <clears throat> but anyway, I want to thank the good Lord and my family. <coughs> Don't be laughing. <coughs> For putting up with me while I was racing and everything. So uh, it was good, and especially the fans. I got quite a few from the Y. Got a bus and come up here today, so I appreciate them coming up. And, of course, I appreciate all of it. Every once in a while, I'd drive for Bud and Moore when uh, Parnelli couldn't run the Trans Am Series, and I'd do that. And Bud said I'd run five times for him and won four of them and run second in the other one. So I had good success with Bud, too. And after that, I went on to haul my Moody, and uh, I run, we ran good. Uh, I won a couple of championships with them, 68 and 69. But... Uh, that lasted a couple of years. After that, I went to, with the Woods. Somehow or another, the, well, the H.A. Fort Road what drove for them, and they called me about running Daytona, and he's going to run two cars. So uh, that was good because uh, I run with him and run with A.J., so it, uh, it worked out good there. Of course, I think I outrun A.J., and so that made them happy. So anyway... Uh, they asked me to know the next year. They want to know if I want to run for them the next year. I said, well, sure, you know. They said, you want A.J. to run? I said, well, no, I want to run by myself, you know. <laughs> but anyway, that's the way it happened and uh, ended up running for them. And uh, I, I tell you, I, what, I, I can't say enough good about them boys. And Leonard Wood, I'd have to say that that is the smartest man in the world out right there. If there's anything that needed that car needed, <laughs> If, if they need anything for that car and if they couldn't find it or couldn't buy it, he made it. And that's, the way, that's just how he was. I appreciate them. They're the hardest working and the best people like that I could think of to drive. And if I was going to run a race tomorrow, I'd want Leonard Wood on it. He'd be the one. Right. And I appreciate it. And I appreciate Leonard, because I'm the boy, Eddie and Lynn, the whole family. They're the nicest family as you could ever drive for. And I really mean that, and I appreciate it. You sure do. And, and I want to thank Richard Petty, too. He, he's probably the one that made me win as many as I did, you know. <laughs> I, I would run hard, because he'd make me run hard, you know. And uh, sometimes he would make a mistake, and I'd pass him, you know. <laughs> and, uh, of course, I didn't ever make no mistakes. He always passed. <laughs> I always accused him of having big engines when he passed me. <laughs> but he's a good sport, and I'm telling you, if it, like I say, I'd rather, I've had more fun running with him than anybody I've ever run with. And because uh, I know if I ever went to a racetrack and he was there, if I could beat him, I'd win the race. So I appreciate it. Sure do. Everything you've done, Richard. And I thank all the fans. I appreciate it, and I thank all the fans that's here tonight. You just don't know how much I enjoyed it. I thank NASCAR. I had some good friends in NASCAR, and I had a close relationship with them, especially Jim Hunter and Jimmy France and uh, Brian. They, you know, I enjoyed them, and so uh, thank you very much, and I'll see you later.